Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of WhitePod, the online community for e-commerce business owners and entrepreneurs. And today we have a special guest with us. He's the chief executive officer at Da Vinci Studios. And his name is King Hobson. King, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Man, I am amazing. I appreciate you all having us. Thank you for having us. Great energy, man. It's really good to have you here. <laughs> so let's jump right in. And just so that our uh, viewers can get to know you a little bit better, can you share some of your background? Of course, of course. So my background is in uh, fine arts. So I began drawing as a child. And um, from there, I was exceptional. My teachers, they realized I was extremely more proficient in the skill of art than I was supposed to be at that age. <laughs> and so um, then that later developed into mastering vision creation. So it expanded from just art to now the vision that I have, I can now create. And then from there, went to a couple art colleges. I left them because art schools didn't typically teach the business. They only taught the talent, like how to draw. And then along the journey, ended up meeting the love of my life, all the way across the map. She's a Cali girl. So I'm in this long distance relationship at the time and I needed to send her a beautiful masterpiece, but I needed to do it on a budget because all this started while I was in my mom's basement. <laughs> so yeah. I started, yeah, I started just coming in with like $75, man, and just wow. had to figure some stuff out. Yeah. And so sent her that. And then after I sent her that and discovered all the secrets to art and uh, digital manufacturing distribution and stuff like that, I was like, this is a business. Why don't all artists do this? This is a lucrative opportunity right here. And so yeah. from there, turned it into a business. And here we are. Wow. So love is the key, really. Is love found is out, right? Key. Yes. <laughs> and some good things come out of California. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's a charming story. I'm sure your grandchildren are going to love hearing about that. Everyone loves the story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Um, so, you know, just going through your website, it seems mm -hmm. that you are really forward thinking and you know, you're into empowering artists around the world. Yeah. What mm -hmm. inspired you to start this business exactly? Man, um, having a lot of doors slammed in my face. So I have a riddle. What does the creator do when everyone slams, the market slams the door in the creator's face? Well, you guessed it. The creator creates his own damn market. And so... <laughs> that's what ended up happening and I um read this book by George Burkowski and it's called how to build a billion dollar app and when I tell you he fleshed out detail by detail every single step you need to take to build a great app and I followed those steps correctly and everything that he said would happen has happened the good and the bad so I had this vision for um, a global art distribution app so that um, children, like when I was a child, I wish this app existed for me. And so I had this vision, slept on it, dreamt about it really being here. And it wasn't here when I woke up. I was like, man, I will go into debt to build this app. Like, I don't care what I have to do. I will do anything to get this thing built. And Long story less long, ended up uh, bootstrapping using the business model that I discovered in a long distance relationship and ended up bootstrapping to have the app built out. And so from there, I launched it. And now we have kids on there. We have um, older people on there, photographers on the app. And now they're able to make money the same way that I was able to do it. And there's no door slammed in their face. There's no one robbing them of 50 percent. They mm -hmm. get to have their way. So that must be gratifying that you've done that for people. It must be a great feeling. Oh uh, man. Uh, it's yeah. Your reward. your vision is is, you know, I would call it praiseworthy and um, you know, creating opportunities and freedom for the next generation of artists is certainly commendable. 
But, you know, starting an econ business like this is a lot harder than most people realize. So uh, can you just share some of the difficulties you face and how you overcame them? Man, difficulties. How long do you have? This would be an all day talk. <laughs> well, you can give us whichever version you're comfortable with. We'll, okay. we'll listen. Yeah. Well, outside of the um, financial difficulties, because, you know, when it comes to starting a business, you really have to think, do I want to take this money and spend it on myself or do I spend it on the business? Do I want to spend it on myself or do I spend it on hiring people or spend it on where I'm lacking at when it comes to operating the business? Outside of the financial, I say the main hurdle that I've seen is an intellectual hurdle, just overcoming oneself and being able to kind of just have those blinders on, like you see in the horse race, like those blinders yeah. and not getting too yeah. distracted looking at the people next to you. So if you're running a business and you're spending every penny you have into growing this thing, the worst thing you could do starting off is hop on Instagram, Facebook, um, Snap, YouTube, all these other platforms and look at everyone else spending their money, taking overseas trips, buying cars or whatever the case is, whatever they're doing. That's the worst thing you can look at. <laughs> mm. So yeah, just uh, being completely focused and keeping those blinders on and keeping the laser side of focus is how I'm able to get everything done and I'm done. I can't tell you what anyone's doing besides what I'm doing. Like I had to keep that type of focus to accomplish and get these things fleshed out. So yeah, that focus part, especially in this world of distractions, because all these distractions didn't exist back then when we had VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. I mean, everyone's attention span is almost zero now. I mean, it's a completely right. different world. It's hard to maintain your focus on anything, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. YouTube videos are nine seconds long and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to keep your focus. So it's commendable that you've done that. And obviously yeah. you put a lot of work into your, into the creative end and that shows through on your finished products because they oh, look yeah. fantastic but you know Thank having you. the best comics in the world is useless unless mm -hmm. people know about them so right. how are you driving potential customers to your website right now well i have this uh marketing strategy utilizing social media but the main thing that i do is i go to all the platforms and Every platform offers group pages. So there's a comic book group page on Facebook. There's a comic book group page on Reddit, LinkedIn, et cetera. And then from there, I'll take a picture with every single product or I'll take a picture standing next to my character or just a video of me talking about what I'm doing because the next generation, the next phase of companies, the evolution of the next great companies are ones with the face where we know the person who's running the company. They show their face, they show their intensive. And you see it in Elon Musk, you see it in Jeff Bezos. Like these companies are successful and they're not necessarily taking the hit of the current market because they have a face. And the companies without a face, like Warner Bros just got acquired. All of these companies without a face, they're slowly getting acquired by companies with faces. And so that's my vision. So I just mark it by showing my face, just showing my face and free stuff. People love free stuff. So I just, yeah. <laughs> so I just give some stuff out, man. Just, um, just give them something like, here, take this, take this comic book home with you. Because with the comics, the comics aren't necessarily for, um, that's not, that's not our best, product i'm probably a question ahead but yeah the comics that's not necessarily the uh, top seller the main purpose of the comics is intellectual property so i study mm -hmm. spider-man i study marvel and marvel spider-man doesn't make marvel all the money through comic sales he makes all the money through licensing and merchandise. merchandising sure Right. Licensing the film rights, licensing the television show rights and podcast right, musical rights or whatever the case is with the particular character. But the comic underwear. Right. Look, 
<laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you, but that's all I had growing up was a bunch of Spider-Man underwear, Spider-Man, everything. So uh, yeah, I had a lot of Spider-Man gear myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what would you say is your core market then? The core market, I would say we're aiming for the next generation. So more so children, teenagers, but our core consumers who actually have the money to spend and spend with us are the young adults. And then we have the middle aged adults when it comes to portraits. So a lot of um, newlyweds, um, memorial pieces and things of that nature. But we're aiming for the children. The children, when they see our stuff, like my fiance has a younger brother. And anytime I go visit, he says, King, how much are your shoes? King, how much is the backpack? King, how much is the comic? Like we're we're building something to like extremely colorful to attract children of this next generation, even along with the app. Like if you take a look at our app, we have children on there who are able and put in a position to where they can make money just off of the images of their artwork. And so that's nice. our core, yeah, that's our core market. Because when I was a child, if I would have had these opportunities, I would have been earning a lot earlier on, but I had to build this and get this fleshed out. And so now children out here making more money at 17 than the average 17 year old would ever make in my time, so. Absolutely. Yeah, nah, it's a brave new world. Cool. <laughs> what are yep. your best selling products, King? My best selling product would have to be the shoes, the portraits, and the clothing, like the apparel. But the least best selling product would have to be the comic books. So the comic books, like I said, the purpose for the comic books isn't necessarily to make sales because when you uh, look at Spider Man, he's not the most profitable superhero because he sells the most comics. He's the most profitable because of the licensing agreements to use yeah. that character. So you license the toy rights, you license the merchandise rights, the film rights, the television show rights. So the comics, the purpose of this is to build up a large catalog of about 300 pieces of intellectual property. And so that's the next, um, milestone for da vinci studios is where we're headed and that association with your comics between your comics and your other goods makes your shoes cooler i guess right oh yeah definitely yeah we we license we license our characters onto our own gear backpacks uh kids backpacks clothing apparel just like marvel does we're literally following sure. the marvel blueprint <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah they know what they're doing <laughs> that's a good one they, they right. outside of my kinfolk as we say in the South, Marvel helped raise me. So definitely have to learn from. Them. Sure. Well, they say follow the leader and then lead. And I think right. that's <laughs> the way to go. What, what's your definitely. favorite product that you have? Your personal favorite? My personal favorite would have to be the comics. The comics and the, and the uh, mobile app. Those are my top two. The app, that was such an incredible milestone that looking back I don't know how I did that debt free I don't even know how I did that like I just thank God my mama let me live in her basement at the time to get that done because <laughs> if I had rent I imagine I would have been able to afford to build that mobile application so the app would be number one and then okay. number two would be the comic books and then number three would be the shoes those are the three and, and it's listed in difficulty so the hardest thing to get done was that app the second hardest were those comic books and then third was the shoes these each each presented a set of challenges that were just so the app was more uh difficult than the comics oh yes Oh, yes, definitely. Especially when you're not a coder. See me, I'm just a vision creator. So I just had a vision. Yeah. And so for me to sit and learn and code, I was like, I will learn how to code to build this app. And then when I started practicing, I got a MacBook and everything just so I can learn this code and stuff. I, I realized it would take me two years 
to really flesh this thing out. I don't have that kind of time. So I'm going to have to <laughs> build up the capital to hire someone to get this done for me correctly. So yeah, that app was, that app was a challenge and still is. Right. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. You have to wear a lot of hats when you're getting started for sure. Um, and you yeah. obviously, you know, you're spinning a lot of plates. So Definitely. how do you keep everything running smoothly at the same time? Oh my gosh, <laughs> man. The, the secret is the trick is, it's not ever really running smoothly. You just keep, you take one ladder like at a that. time, but it's not ever really running smoothly. It's like the world, like the weather, it'll be clear for a little while. Then before you know it, a storm will come out of nowhere or it'll start snowing out of nowhere. So it's volatile with the market. So so far, it's it's just been a it's been an up and down and spinning all these plays. But to be honest, this is a dream come true. These are the things that if if I were to go to another planet right now, I would be happy with what I left behind on Earth. I would be more than satisfied oh, with what I, like I dedicated. Put that. Yeah, nice. yeah, I'd be more than satisfied with what I dedicated my time to while I'm existing on this Earth. My my comics, my app, like it's this is my dream. So. You're making your mark on the world. Nice. So it's, it's more like a controlled chaos then. It, things are not yes. really smooth, but but you're adjusted yes. to it. Right, right. A control yeah. is almost like Elon Musk. So like he are you addicted to chaos? Are you addicted to all this kind of? Psychologically, like, I must be. I have to be. Nah. I think you have to have a, because when I see other people um try to follow the leader, as you say, and start a business, it's totally not for them. It's extremely too stressful and detrimental. Mm -hmm. That's their hair start falling out. But for me, this is, I, I'm built for these difficult challenges and I'm the one that'll actually go through, I'm the one that'll clean the toilets when I'm working at, if I do the work that no one wants to do, I'll do the dirty work. And so that's just how my mind is psychologically. Cool. So that's, those are great words, you know, for our audience. But apart from that, do you have mm -hmm. any other pearls of wisdom that you'd like to share with our audience? Pearls of wisdom. Um, I would say don't get distracted. And I will quote uh, T.I. from ATL. when He said, you might lose your footies a little bit. You might stumble at the most, but you don't fall. So no matter how volatile the market is, I don't care if it's a recession, pandemic, and inflation rolled into one, do not fall and do not give up on your dreams. It only dies if you stop and just put your hands up like I'm done with it. So don't get distracted and don't fall. And number one, uh, the last one, learn your superpowers. Know your superpowers. Like you, for example, Mark, what do you, what do you say your superpower is? What's your, your strength? Uh, I think I'm able to make people comfortable, hopefully, you know, when I okay. speak to them. And, That's a good uh, book right there. Yeah. So, so yeah i would say that's one of the things and, and have a good sense of humor okay. and, and i think hum, humor sort of runs the world in a way definitely and it's the most important thing when it's you know when you're looking for a partner in life or anything you know for me at least humor is the most important thing so wow okay so mark makes people comfortable in humor he has a way we that makes them laugh your, yeah yeah well, if you make people laugh then the rest of what you have to say can penetrate their medulla oblongata, so to speak, you know, like if people are laughing, then they're listening, you know, but you know, if they're, yeah. if they're bored or defensive, then your mm -hmm. message won't get through your message will get lost Messages right, are, right. are delivered most effectively with humor, I think. Yeah, it actually releases a chemical of uh, serotonin, I think. Serotonin. Yeah, when absolutely. You laughing and, and so if that technique is extremely lucrative so hey I, you got me here you got me comfortable so i appreciate yeah. your powers <laughs> well it's going both ways so it's really enjoyed the conversation thanks again thank for you for spending time with us it was a real pleasure speaking with you and i know our audience is really going to appreciate this and and you know we wish you all the continued success going forward i appreciate that mark and the white labs did i say that correctly yeah, that's one of our brands. This is White Pod. We have White Pod and White Labs White and a few other brands. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you, White Pod. I appreciate you, Mark. 
<laughs> nice lot, yeah. King. All right. I'll let you go. You have to get prepared for your 11 o'clock. Yeah. Right? Maybe take a power <laughs> yeah. nap. I think might be. A good I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. My brain, I'm in ketosis right now. So it's, it's difficult to get any kind of rest. I'm running off of um, ketones and fat yeah, cells. That clean fuel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you nice. know? What you, you're a health guy. Well, I know about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm on okay. a journey. I'm not in ketosis. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, I'm on low carb and intermittent fasting and all that stuff. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. You have to take care of that stuff at my age. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I'm getting ahead of it. When I'm I first... happy for you that you know about it at your young age because, you know, you might live to be 120. <laughs> If I told you what I was aiming for, you would bust out laughing. I'm aiming for 300. I want to be the first man uh, to reach 300. I, I know the, you could crack the code of reverse engineering and reverse aging and all these scientific methods that haven't been discovered yet, but I'm aiming for 300. Well, if you live like a Mediterranean, you know, you, you, then a lot of these Mediterranean people, you know, they live to be like 115, 120 years old. It's not uncommon, you know, just because yeah. they're eating olive oil and fish and and all this yeah. stuff you know mm -hmm. so anyway stuff, that's a whole nother podcast subject i think maybe we can reconnect and talk about that too but this one has been uh like i said it's been a delight a lot of fun talking to you thanks again thank, you. thank you mark you all take it easy take care